So, based on the electricity generated between the electrode and by to, through the process of electrolysis, Faraday's have derived some law. The factors affecting the quantities of matter liberated during the process of electrolysis. That's invented and investigated by the great physicist Faraday. So this is your first law. The mass of the substance liberated is directly proportional to the charge passed in the electrolyte. This is your Faraday's first law. So moving further towards Faraday's first law, you are able to see if an electric current I is passed between the electrolyte for a time t. You can see this is accumulating here. The amount of charge passed is considered as I into T. According to the law, the mass of substance liberated, the mass of substance liberated is directly proportional to the charge. So M is equal to Z into I T. Where Z is the constant for the substance being liberated and it's called as electrochemical equivalent. And its unit is kilogram per coulomb. The electrochemical equivalent of a substance is defined as the mass of the substance liberated in electrolysis when one coulomb charge is passed through the electrolyte. This is your third as law of electrolysis and it is considered as the first law. If you talk about the Faraday's law of electrolysis second law, the mass of the substance liberated at an electrode by a given amount of charge is proportional to the chemical equivalent of the substance. So the mass is directly proportional to the chemical equivalent. So chemical equivalent is equal to relative atomic mass divided by balance E. So for carbon it is the mass of the atom divided by 1 by 12 of mass of carbon atom into valence E. This is your Faraday's second law.